All right, um, can you please say for everyone at home your name and the name of the character or characters in your case that you play? Absolutely. I am Brian J. Agee, and in this show I will be the Bishop of Digne and Legle, and also a carousing, uh, generally lonely sir looking for company. <laughs> and uh, what, what can you tell us about the characters, um, particularly the Bishop and Legle? that the audience might want to know about for people who are maybe not so familiar with the show. Absolutely. Uh, so the bishop is actually uh, very pivotal in this show. He kind of starts the, the dominoes that, that create the story that turns into the life of Jean Valjean. And so he has a, a very key role in the show. It's very short and actually he wasn't even included in the original production. Um, he was not added until we added the prologue uh, for actually for the folks who had not seen the show before that and as it started to gain popularity for folks who hadn't read it. Uh, by contrast, in the book he actually gets an entire book to himself which is about 30% of the novel, uh, which is mostly talking about his life and his character. And he's actually a, an incredibly humble man, very different from most of the bishops of his day. He spent all of his money on the poor and lived on very little instead of living like a prince. Um, Legley, on the other hand, is a, a character who um, he and Marius are kind of the two that come from money. Um, his dad was a duke, uh, made so simply because he helped one of the King Louis out of his carriage at one point, and so he was feeling generous and made him a duke. Uh, yeah, that's... And out of everything that we've been doing so far, all the direction we've been getting from Doug, what we have left to do, this whole experience, what are you most excited about? Oh, that's hard to say. It's definitely been a lot of fun working with Doug and Eric. Um, it's also thrilling to work with such a great pool of talent from Spokane and to have such a proud showing and to have somebody who toured with the Broadway just kind of trembling about how powerful uh, the voices are in this show. For those, for those who don't know who that person that traveled is, who is that? Doug Webster, who's our director. and He, uh, he was uh, the Valjean understudy in the 90 tour that came through Spokane and has been involved with the show for about 25 years in various capacities. Played almost every role that's male. <laughs> and what are you most looking forward, either out of the rehearsal process or even the performance, what are you most looking forward to doing that we maybe haven't done yet, or what are you most looking forward to doing again? Um, I think I'm just excited to see the whole show run start to finish staged. I mean, Opening night will be really exciting, but I'm kind of excited for, let's say, like the middle of the second week when everything's in a groove and we're more focused on the story than on the show, if that makes sense. Okay, and lastly, if, you, if somebody was going to see this show for the first time, they'd never seen Les Mis before, maybe even never seen a musical before, they're coming to see this performance, what, what would you want to say to those people? Bring Kleenex. So, <laughs> and an open mind. All right. Well, thank you very much, Brian. Absolutely. Thank you, David. Yeah, awesome. One. One violin. If you need help with anything, let me know. You see how dark it is? I'm not some kind of dog. It's kind of like the knowledge of the audience is all there. Either ignore them or go straight out as if you're thinking to yourself. That way the audience can. So you can always you can do this or you do this. So, tech for us on Saturday is going to be really good. Cool. Is it just as Not on Friday. Oh, well, no, on Friday, yes. If you can. Grab it somehow. Grab it somehow. So, uh, can you tell everyone at home uh, your name and the name of the character that you're playing? I am Andrea Olson, and I will be playing Fontaine. And Andrea, for those maybe not so familiar with the show, what, what are some of the key things they should know about Fontaine? Sure. Uh, Fontaine is Cosette's mother, and uh, Fontaine is, uh, if you've seen the movie, is played by Anne Hathaway. Um, Fontaine dies early on in the 
uh, show in the story in the book. And uh, the main character, Jean Valjean, takes uh, her daughter and promises to die Fontaine. While she's dying, she, he promises to her that he will take care of her daughter. And he does do that. And then um, uh, on his deathbed, he sees the ghost of Fontaine. And uh, he goes to join her. Uh, in heaven or wherever you think ghosts go. Um, uh, so he, at the end of the show, uh, uh, Fontaine appears as a ghost and um, uh, uh, brings Jean Valjean um, uh, from Earth. And then we all sing this wonderful, great piece at the end that everybody likes to sing along with. Yes. So Fontaine doesn't have a very large role, although um, it's, she's kind of pivotal as far as what uh, for Jean Valjean to make that commitment to take care of her daughter. And out of everything we've been doing so far, um, what are you most looking, at, or and everything we have yet to do, what do you most look forward to out of this whole experience? Um, well, I, you know, I, I really am interested in the process, and the process for me is so cool, just learning about how to do things better on stage, how to bring the character to life, how to uh, sing and and bring that character through the voice. Um, what's really fun is, is, is watching everybody and their progress and coming along in, within their character as well as uh, vocally and uh, uh, acting ability. Um, so for me the process is really cool and then uh, watching the reaction of the audience um, I think is probably the next most rewarding thing. Uh, and I look forward to that first night when we have people in the audience and, and they're crying or laughing or on their feet cheering or whatever. So it's that sort of rush that you've made them feel something um, by portraying our characters and telling a story on stage. And if somebody hadn't ever seen this show, um, maybe not the movie, maybe maybe this was the first time they've come to see a show, okay. What and they were coming to see this show, okay. what are some of the key things you want to tell them, you know, let them know? Um, the biggest thing is that it's compressed time, so you really have to remember that there's it's a 1,400-page book, and um, each scene, each song could be a, a, a compressed time, maybe even several months compressed into one song. For example, um, one of the songs that I do uh, called "Lovely Ladies on the Docks," the the transformation of my character from um, a work a working woman to um, basically a prostitute. Uh, that happens over the, in the book, that happens over a span of several years. Um, in the musical, obviously, we don't have years, so it happens in a five minute song. So the, the fact that there's compressed time, and I think that might be confusing for some people if you're not realizing that everything is basically, you know, 20 years of a story compressed into two and a half hours. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much, Andrea. You are so welcome. Thanks, David. <laughs> Hey, what's up? You having fun? Yeah. Are you excited? Are you doing? Are you excited to do our tech rehearsal on Saturday? I'm most excited for the orchestra to get here. That's going to be a lot of fun. Is that Sunday? Tom no, it's Saturday. The orchestra will be here Saturday. Yeah. Okay. The yeah, Sis probe first, and then that's going to be goosebump time. Yeah. So what's going to happen is he's going to finish the. I know the story must begin. The audience is hearing the ba da 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 da. At which point the Miz fans are going to start screaming. I would prefer it if you come in levels. And so if somebody stops here, then I'd like to go a little bit farther. Or somebody go down low, like he was, or whatever. So it's it's not just a line of people coming down. There is a duty I must. There is a promise I have made.
So why don't you tell everybody your name and your character's name? Hi, my name is David McCarthy, and the character that I'm pl I play some minor characters, uh, as well as the major character I'm playing is also Grantaire. Tell me about Grantaire. Grantaire is one of the students, uh, along with Angeros and the others, to uh, lead the revolution, the Junior Revolution. And Grantaire doesn't particularly care for the revolution so much, um, as much as he just kind of idolizes Andros. So he uh, kind of sticks around him, and he's also a drunk, uh, drinks a lot. But one thing that uh, we're kind of doing a little bit different is we're not just playing him as a drunk, rather than someone who gets drunk and maybe who drinks. And, uh, and through that, uh, when some of the students die, they get, their motivations are based around that as well. What are you most looking forward to in the show? Uh, I am most looking forward to actually doing this in full costume. Uh, I, uh, and then, of course, finally hearing what the audience reactions will be when I actually get to play my character. And Grantaire, will you ever put the bottle down? Grantaire has, has uh, put the bottle down in terms to speak. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, but I, think, I think it's um, something, as far as, especially for his drinking, that uh, too many people just play him just straight up drunk and maybe make a character out of him being drunk, but I think rather than that, we should examine the reasons why Grantaire gets drunk, and I'm hoping that people get to notice that. All right. Am I forgetting one? Uh, yeah. Well, people seeing the show for the first time. Oh, what would you what would you say for people who have seen the sh are seeing the show for the first time? Uh, Les Mis is uh, completely sung. There's no dialogue in it, and we're focusing a lot more on the correct singing of it, um, and then the acting of it. We want to make both important, but uh, part of the thing that Doug has said is that uh, who is our director is we want to make sure that you're connecting to the music and that the music drives the emotion. To the, to the point where if we just got up and stood in front of microphones and sang, you'd be able to still understand the show. Um, so that, that's one thing to look forward to. Um, it's a long show, and also, um, although there is going to be an intermission, for those of you who haven't bought your tickets yet, and if you haven't, buy them now. Um, and then also, it's, um, there's something for everybody to take away in the show, I think. Um, there's themes of redemption, there's uh, revenge, there's forgiveness, there's um, right and wrong, there's, what, uh, there's absolutism and, and whatnot, and things that maybe are good and things that maybe still might be good but you can take too far. So I'm really excited to see how that works out. But it's, it's not secured right. or anything, but it's sitting here. Alright, thank you. Alright. <laughs> No. Where is this now? It is uh, now 8 o'clock. We started at 10, 10 a.m., although I was here at 9.30. We've had a nice lunch, a wonderful lunch. And uh, here I am still singing. It's going to be awesome.